today I am a knight at home. We saw in the last episode uh, what a knight might uh, eat on his journeys around his demesne. Now he's at home with his household and more sophistication. And Chris is going to take us through some of the things and some of the aspects of diet that are quite surprising. So Chris, over to you. Well, today, Jason, I am your, your cook and your general looker after her. In a knightly household, um, a man's cook would work very closely with his physician. Ah, so there'd be a team looking after the, the, the noble, well, the knight, the knight. Well, yes, I'm going to say, you've got to keep your knight fighting fit. Right. Medieval medicine was all a bit strange. They had the theory of the four humours, um, hot, cold, wet, dry, yes. and absolutely everything was related in some way to one of these properties. Ah, so food might be hot and dry. Yes. Wow, OK. So spices are usually considered to be hot and dry. Things like um, herbs and green leafy vegetables are cold and wet. OK. So that makes sense. But then you get onto root vegetables, which are considered to be cold and dry because they are of the earth. Right. Some of it doesn't make a lot of sense, but your physician in the morning would come and see you. He might feel your head to check your temperature. He would take a specimen of your urine. Right. Would he hold it up to he the would, light? And... He would hold it up, check it for colour, clarity, um, and he would also check it for taste. Taste? Taste. Urine? Yes. Somebody else's? Yes. yes. Right. Well, this is because they were, even in the Middle Ages, aware of something they called the honey disease, which is diabetes and that makes your urine sweet. Ah. So whilst they didn't know what caused it, if you have overly sweet urine, you would be expected to abstain from sweetened foods. Ah, so interesting. So they even, they, they, they knew the symptoms of what we now yeah. know as diabetes, yes. and they knew what to do to stop it happening. Quite an odd job. Really, probably quite well paid if you're going to be tasting somebody else's wee in the morning. Oh, there are even odder jobs. I <laughs> <laughs> would we'll do that another time. Yes, I, right, I think okay. so. Now, we've got bread. Yes. But I can see now very clearly that that's quite different. This is very definitely white bread. It is, isn't it? So it's, it's highly refined flour. It's still not made with modern wheat. Mm. So it's not bread as we understand. It's actually made with spelt flour. Right. Um, spelt is an ancient grain, it's lower in gluten. Is it a bit less healthy for you, do you think? When we're thinking in terms of diet generally, the medieval upper classes had by far a worse diet than those we saw earlier, living in their peasant cottage, eating their nice fresh fish, their yes. bit of green, yes, um, and, and their nice rye or barley bread. And we go up into the status of spending more money, more fancy cutlery, more fancy kind of glassware and bowls, and arguably worse quality food from the health perspective. Absolutely. Obviously, from their perspective, it was much better food because it was more expensive, more refined, mm -hmm. and it showed your social status as yes. well, didn't it? in a nightly household, you would probably have, at this point, your own bake oven. Right. And your bread would be baked regularly. So somebody would get up early in the morning, very early in the morning, get the bread oven started, and then actually put the bread on for everybody's breakfast. Yes, so. and it would be the entire household. Right. Which could be several hundred people. That's a lot of bread. It isn't is, it, it is. Um, your bread, as, yes. as the knight, the lord of the manor, would be cooked in the upper part of the oven, so it would be less likely to be burnt. Right. And you would have the first slice off the top, right. which is, of course, the upper crust, which is where that, that phrase comes from. Fantastic. There you go, you see? Learn something every day. That's always important. What is, what is this? That's well? what today we would call pudding. Right. Um, that's pears in spiced wine. It is basically Christmas in a bowl. Right. Um, mm, it does smell quite Christmassy. Yes. So is that, that, would that have spices and that's got... Yes, sort of spices. That's got lots Christmas of. It's spices. got cinnamon. It's got cloves. It's got nutmeg. It's got mace. It's got all sorts of really good spices in it. And there was originally a large quantity of red wine. It also has sugar in it. But why is a pudding on the table at the same time as we've got bread? We don't have our main course yet, or any courses nope. as such. In the Middle Ages, you had what were called removes. So you would have on your table. You might have soup. You would have meat, you would have fish, you would have sweet dishes, and you could help yourself to any of these things in any order. So you'd sit down and they, these would all be placed around you, yes. and then you have a bit of this and a bit of that as your taste... As your taste dictated. Yeah. 
what have you got actually cooking here for us uh, in in the pot, in the right. pottage? In the pottage, yeah, but we have yet more pottage. Right. The beans are a crossover food, so you're going to have some more beans with leeks and bacon, but you also have rabbit. Ah, rabbit. And would I have hunted the rabbit or would it be brought to me by somebody else? You may well in your downtime have gone out and, and hunted a rabbit or two. Um, you are of the status that was allowed to have rabbits. Ah, so it'd have my own rabbits. Yes, so. you'd have your own rabbit, Warren. Rabbits at this point weren't roaming free. They were actually carefully controlled in, in rabbit warrens, looked after by somebody called a warrener. We have got a strong box made of oak, lots of bits of metal over it to protect very precious contents. So what have, we, what have we got in here? We have in here some of the most precious commodities in medieval times, particularly in medieval England. Um, this <laughs> is a spice chest. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, you probably know these. Nutmegs. Right. These, I were told at some stage, were twice their weight in gold. Is that nonsense or...? No, they were hugely valuable. Um, at the period we're talking about, sort of the 14th, 15th century, four nutmegs would cost what a labourer would earn in a day working in the field. Right. So about a penny each. Wow. You might know these. Cardamom yes. pods, that's So it. these are used in cooking. They were also used as a breath freshener. Right. Because we're talking, you know, the days before minty fresh toothpaste. Because there is quite a crossover between medicine and spices yes. as well. Because I think cloves are quite good for teeth, aren't they? Well, uh, the oil of cloves, even today, I think, is used. Is yes, that right? it's very, they're very good for toothache. I have this one, which is not cinnamon. It's a close relative of the cinnamon. It's called cassia. Right. Uh, and we have several peppers. Uh, these you would probably recognise as being ordinary peppercorns. Right. These are... I can find a good one. That is a good one. Okay. These were the first sort of pepper that came into this country, and the Romans brought us these. Yeah. Um, it's a type of pepper, and it's long. So, what do you think it might imaginatively be called? Long pepper. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And you use this in exactly the same way. These little chaps here. These are also a type of peppercorn. Right. And these are called grains of paradise. Grains of Paradise. A modern, modern marketing is not a modern thing no. at all, so they call these Grains of Paradise, they probably doubled the price. Yes. Yes. Because um, particularly <laughs> with the medieval mind, Paradise was associated with the Garden of Eden and with ease and luxury, so... Jerusalem was over there and the centre of the world and everything, yes. so... One of mm. the most exotic spices in here is this one. Is it sugar? It is sugar. Wow. Oh. That's just raw sugar cane. You have to grate it. Right, so you've or got grind it. physical work to actually get the sugar off. Yes. And was that very valuable as well? One of the most expensive spices in that box. Hundreds of pounds yes. worth. Yes, mm, there's, there's that and saffron. So this is what somebody of high status would have as their total collection of very expensive. Yes. And very well protected. This probably goes in the strong room with the gold. Yes, and, the, and the, the keys are on the, the lady of the manor's belt at and all times. Box, because it's that expensive. This represents yes. many, many hours of an ordinary person's work. Yes. Well, probably years worth yes. of work. Absolutely. So um, the equivalent of many thousands of pounds. Yeah. Probably tens of thousands of pounds, actually. You're going to go and um, put a judicious quantity of appropriate uh, spices what? into the uh, Well, rabbit, I thought I'd, I'd get you to do some more, more uh -oh. work, Jason. So <laughs> right. we're going to grind up a few things because yes. we are only a knightly household. We're not a noble household. Right. So we're not going to overspice our food. Yep. So we're going to just have a few spices with our rabbit. We'll have a few peppercorns and a little bit of mace. And this one which looks like bark. Yes. This is called galangal or ganlingale and it's a relative of ginger. Okay. So we'll have a few bits of that and a couple of cloves. And you want me to just I grind just them up you into to, a... to into grind it. those just for a bit. Depending on your status, you'd have different people doing different jobs. I presume actually doing spices would probably be a, high, a kind of more kind of... It wouldn't have been a junior job, would it? No, because they're so having, expensive. Having anything to do with spices was a senior cook's job. Right. And of course, in, in all, nearly all medieval houses, all the cooks were men. Were they? Yeah. How interesting. 
certainly in the great houses, you know, obviously in our, our peasant house and our farmer's house, it would be the housewife doing all the cooking while the men mm. were out doing the hard work. Right. Would they have imported special specialists and things like that? Oh, yes. You'd have your fancy cook from foreign parts. They were medieval celebrity chefs. No. Much sought after. Bishops would poach chefs from other bishops. Kings would poach cooks from, from bishops. <laughs> There was, there was quite a merry-go-round. So we in... think of celebrity chefs as a modern phenomenon, but it really isn't. It's, it's been going on for hundreds, thousands of years. Yeah. Ah, right. Lovely. Wonderful, thank you. I'm going to pop these spices that Jason has so beautifully ground for me into the pot which contains uh, our rabbit, the dates we chopped up earlier, and some wine. So we've obviously got quite high status, expensive glassware mm -hmm. by the looks of it. Obviously all handmade, as everything would have been. Yes, this glassware would have been um, hand blown in either Italy, um, so even then glass was coming from Murano. Uh, right. Or from uh, what we today call the Czech Republic or right. Bohemia. Um, we were very good in this country, in, in Britain, at stained glass, at flat glass. We weren't very good at, at blowing it. So again, this has come a long way, like the spices, this has travelled, yeah. and obviously glass is quite fragile, so I presume it gets more expensive too the further you Absolutely. go. Absolutely, yes. Wow. And this is very much a status symbol. So we've, we've got spoon, knife. Yes. I don't see a fork as no, such. No, we know of forks at this period, but they're not in common use. Um, in England, they're considered to be nasty foreign French things. Right. And we don't like the French. Right. Uh, so we don't use forks. They were actually invented in Italy in the 13th century. They took a while to come here. We might use a fork um, for, a, for something like a stewed fruit or to steady a meat if it was being carved. Is etiquette a big thing? Oh, it's, it's hugely important. Right. Um, you would actually bring your own cutlery with you right. to a banquet unless it was somebody who was royal and then they might have spoons specially cast for the occasion right. with some sort of little finial on the top. Souvenir spoon. Yes. You would use your knife to, to cut your meat or your bread. You're allowed to steady it with your left hand, but you don't put your left hand anywhere near your mouth. It's because you use your left hand for something far less savoury, <laughs> as they still do in, in many, in many, many countries, countries today. In the world. Yes, yes, yes. So you, you chop your food into gobbets? Gobbets? Gobbets, gobbets. gobbets is yes. a good word you, you were telling me earlier. Yeah. Chew it into gobbets. Yeah. Then put the knife down or...? You are or... allowed, actually, to use your knife to convey your food to your mouth. So you could sort of jab it and... Yes. Eat. Gosh. And the, the spoon would be used for sort of dishes you couldn't stab with the knife? Yes. Right. And fingers? Could you Fing use fingers for things? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But right hand only? Right hand only. And you would have your napkin mm. over your right shoulder so that you could wipe your fingers between bites or courses. So you'd just, rather than on your clothes, you'd yes. wipe it on that, which is a... Uh, should we have a look at this? Yes. Sort of a like a tea towel almost, it's, isn't it? It's quite long, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then that goes over, goes over your right shoulder, thus. Yeah. So you look a bit like a sommelier. Yep. There we go. So I would be... So I, I, would, I would chop things up, jab them, or grab them like this, mm -hmm. eat, and then... Yes. So this is going to get mucky with juices and everything. Absolutely. So. And, and it is on trestle tables, though. The tables yeah. were te temporary. They were put up for the occasion and then taken down and the hall was used for something else. Yes, we think fat, flat pack for furniture is another modern invention. It's not. So, should we have a look at it? Because the food so far has been lovely and I'm sure this is going to be lovely too. As you can see, your, your bread this time yes. is wrapped. Right. It has to be covered because it is yours. Yes. Um, maybe your trencher bread. There's a, a bit of rabbit. There we go. That looks lovely. And another bit of rabbit. There we go. There's some, a bit of bean to you. That's more than I don't think I can eat much more than that. <laughs> I can see why you'd need to use your hand to steady it. Mm. Um, get some spices with it. Oh, wrong hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There were all sorts of other rules of etiquette. That mm. You weren't supposed to sit too close to the person next to you on the bench. Right. Um, there were rules about, obviously, things that we think are, are bad manners these days, like picking your nose and belching. Mm. Um, conversation was encouraged, but it was supposed to be at a, at a subdued level. 
So when you see in the Hollywood movies people getting raucous and throwing food and mm. generally behaving badly, that's the sort of thing that would get you in a big household relegated to second sitting. And second sitting is when you get the leftovers. Ah. It tastes like Christmas rabbit, actually. Mm. It's the one of describing it. I think I need something to drink. I think you what, do. What's this? This is claret. It doesn't look like claret no. at all. No. Medieval claret is a white spiced wine. That's really nice as well. So similar type of spices again. Yes. That sort of it's echoing yes. the food quite nicely. Yeah. But it's um hmm. I have to say though, this food is kind of more more refined, but almost feels less hearty in some ways. I mean it, it's um we talked about the peasant food earlier. The peasant food is lovely and it sort of feels wholesome. This is starting to feel quite sophisticated. What's fascinating about this meal is that we've got sweet and we've got savoury, we've got wines. The groups of spices all go together. The pudding and the main course being served at the same time. In fact, from a taste perspective, it actually works quite well. And I suppose from a medieval health perspective, that was, might have been similar. Well, this is, you know, obviously your physician has decided that you are feeling slightly wet and cold today <laughs> and that you need warming up with some hot, dry spices. And this is starting to get a bit sugary, heavily spiced. It's a bit complicated. It's lovely. It probably takes a lot longer to pre mm -hmm. prepare as well, of course, and costs a fortune. Um, but for my taste, I would go with the peasant food. But of course, that would be a hideous faux pas if I was a knight back in medieval times. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and use that notification button. And we will be doing some more food stuff next time, moving up still further into the ranks to the top echelons of society. This stuff is great. I wonder what's going to be served to me next.